game press conferences, a couple reminders. Please silence all cell phones. Please make sure that you, there is no cell phone video or flash photography or video cameras in the press conferences. Media may access press conference video at the NCAA digital workroom. Our format today is an opening statement from the head coach and then questions for the players. Please raise your hand when you have a question and we'll bring the microphone to you. Please identify yourself by name and affiliation prior to each question if you would please. With that, we'll go to the opening statement from Coach Lisa Bluter. Oh, um, first of all, I said it earlier in the week that West Virginia was not an eight seed. Um, there is no way. This, that team is really good. Um, Mark has done a great job in his year that he's been there, and uh, they played really, really hard. But um, I, I really do think that was one of the better defensive teams we've seen all year. I'm so proud of our team for only having six turnovers in the second half against that pressure defense. That's keeping your composure, especially when they tied it up. Um, and this might have been our lowest field goal percentage that we've ever won a game with. We found a way to win in a different way, and, and we won with our defense tonight. We, we out-rebounded them by seven. Um, we valued the ball. Uh, a little bit shaky to begin with, but we valued the ball, and um, our defense was pretty good tonight. Everybody talks about our offense, but I think our defense is pretty good tonight. Okay, we'll go to questions for Caitlin Clark and Hannah Stolke. And please address your questions to one of the student athletes, if you would. We'll start in the back there. Scott Docterman, go ahead. Hi, Scott Docterman with The Athletic. This is for Caitlin. Um, at one juncture, you just kind of you, you went back to the free throw line when, when Hannah was shooting. Smiled. Uh, you made a heart. You did it, At that point, did it feel like you could almost relax that you saw the victory within your grasp? Yeah, I think for sure. I think our team's really good about playing until the final buzzer, but you know, I'm really proud of Hannah. She missed two free throws there early in the fourth quarter, and she comes back, and I think she makes four in a row. Um, and that's tough to do as somebody that you know, has really worked on her free throw shooting. Um, but we all have confidence in her, and to be in those pressure, pressure situations and to really step up to the line and make four in a row after missing two in a row is, is tough. And um, she extended it to a three-possession game for us, so I think that definitely gives you a lot of confidence. And with the way our defense had been playing all night, I knew um, if we could extend it to three possessions, you know, we were going to be you know, pretty good um, from there on out. So I'm just really proud of her, honestly. Holly Rowe, ESPN. Go ahead, Holly. This is for Hannah Stolke. Hannah, you talked about how you've really been working on your free throws. What have you improved, and what was it like to step up with the game on the line and be so crucial in that moment? Um, I think it helps with my confidence a lot. Um, going into these big games, I'm going to need to knock down free throws, and um, I think this is a stepping stone to that for sure. Uh, we'll go here in the second row, Brent. There we go. Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. Caitlin, question for you. I was talking with Kristen Meyer earlier this year, and she said that you've always had this ability to watch what was happening in the crowd and the court. She said <laughs> if someone was eating popcorn in the 12th row, you'd know. <laughs> you've done that in college. Like, you're looking into the stands a lot. Did you do that more tonight, I'm wondering? And also, like, when you do that, what are you or who are you looking for? Um, I try not to look in the stands the best I can. Um, I don't know. I think, you know, my family has always been people that have been there for me through the ups and downs of my journey and I think more than anything they just look at me and like motivate me and I think that's just a sign of reassurance or I'll look to our bench and get that too and um but like I've always been one to play to the crowd like that's just who I am like that's what I kind of do and an entertainer in a way like I always want to get them going and um I thought our crowd was tremendous tonight they really willed us to this victory and um yeah, I think I, I definitely do it. So at times, I'm not even aware as much. Sometimes I'm just looking around. Um, but I think it's being able to lock in at the same time. Like, sometimes I don't even notice how loud the environment's getting because I'm so focused on the court. Kyle Huseman, Hawkeye Report. Question for both of you guys. Um, this game went completely different than a lot of your guys' games this season. I mean, 64 to 54. How are you guys able to get it done in, in a game that's completely different from the way that you guys normally do it? And then secondly, where does this win rank in terms of toughest ones mentally and physically to get through? This is definitely up there with the best of them for mentally and emotionally and physically grinding this out and getting the win. But 
to be honest, like looking back on our journey last year, to me, this is like one of the hardest rounds in the NCAA tournament. Everybody's really good. You're expected to win. You're on your home court. We have all the pressure in the world. Um, they have absolutely nothing to lose to come in here and upset us. And, um, you know, that happened my sophomore year. Last year, we were in a game that was even closer than this one. Um, so I think our group was never flustered by any means when they went and tied it up. Yes, we had so many opportunities tonight where we got to a 10-point lead, a 7-point lead, and we couldn't figure out a way to extend it. And honestly, we just didn't shoot the ball very well. We just didn't make shots um, that we normally make. We didn't shoot it too great from the three-point line. But I think that should give us a lot of motivation. You know, West Virginia is, you know, a really good basketball team, and we found a way to, to win. We changed up our defenses. Um, we got big rebounds when it mattered. We made big free throws. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing is – there's a lot of positive to take away from this when maybe we didn't even play our best basketball or didn't look as pretty. Um, I think that's more fulfilling of a win for us than you know going out there and winning by 30 points. Go to the middle back. Uh, Jason Rue, KCHA Radio. Uh, this one's for my nine-year-old who threw up this morning on the way into school and couldn't come to the game tonight. So uh, she's curious to know, you know, you, you've reached a number of the goals that you're looking for in your college career. She's curious to know, as am I, um, what are your goals once you get to the M or WNBA? Oh, gosh. I think that's a loaded question. I think, first and foremost, like, my focus is solely on this team, and that was one of the reasons that I made this decision of, you know, letting everybody know, like, I'm leaving after this year. I can have a lot of closure. I could walk off the court tonight and know that was my last game ever in this arena. And, you know, that's sad. And um, But at the same time, you know, when this journey does end, I know, you know, the WNBA, it's a, it's a quick flip. you got to be ready for it. But, um, yeah, I think the time will come when I sit down and think about all my professional goals and aspirations. But for right now, my goal is to help this team win a national title and um, have a lot of fun doing it and smile on the way out. And, um, enjoy every single second because it's gone in the blink of an eye. I can't believe I'm a senior and I just played my last game here. So uh, I think that's the biggest thing. Zachary Draves, SB Nation Swish Appeal. Uh, my question is for Hannah. Um, I, Coach Bluter alluded to it earlier, um, how the offense generally gets a lot of attention with this team, uh, but defense certainly uh, ruled the night. Uh, what does that say about this team in terms of defensive prowess when the offense gets a lot of attention? Um, I think a lot of people think we're only an offensive team, you know, um, and we do work on defense all the time. Um, and. I'm glad we got to show that tonight. Um, that's what won this game. So I'm really proud of that. Go ahead. Howard Kessler, New York Post. Caitlin, were there any times during the game, during breaks in action, maybe not when it's going on, but where you did try and soak it in a little bit, where you did try and be like, the, oh, this is different. This is not ever going to happen again. Did you ever have that think, when it was? I think at the beginning of the game during the national anthem, that's just something I've tried to do all year long is like soak in our crowds and look around and enjoy it and kind of take a deep breath. And, you know, you look around, it's like standing room only. Like the place is so hot because there's so many people in there and there's no air conditioning. And I just look around and I, that's when I try to soak it in the most. And then obviously the game starts and you're not really too worried about it. And then at the end of the game, you know, I would have never left the court if I wasn't forced to get off. But um I think those are the two moments that, you know, I soaked it in the most. Right here. Yeah, Michael Vopel, ESPN.com. Caitlin, I think only seven assists for Iowa tonight, not something you're going to see very often um, mm. in the whole history of Iowa basketball. Iowa, right? Can you talk about being able to – you mentioned having to win a different way, but when you have to win when you don't have the ball movement that you guys are, are used to having. Yeah, I think it's – it's definitely difficult when people are out pressuring and denying us like they were. I think it's definitely something we can learn from. There's going to be teams we face, um, you know, going into the next round that are going to pressure us the same exact way. I, I thought we, you know, we did, we should have ripped through. We should have been in triple threat. We should have been ready to make passes. Um, but also, I thought we drove downhill really well, and that's that's what you're going to get when people are out pressuring pressuring you. Um, but yeah, I mean, seven assists is not. Iowa basketball, but at the same time, we didn't make many shots. So we only made 17 shots. Um, we made five threes. I was the only one to make a three. So uh, like I said, our offense wasn't stellar by any means tonight, but I'm just so proud of our group. Like our defense was really phenomenal. And um, I know we'll get right back to it. You know, it's kind of, you know, an anomaly. And that's, that's what happens sometimes. But you got to be gritty and find a way to win. And that's exactly what this team did. Last question for the student athletes. Uh, Tanner Mountain to U92. This is a question for Caitlin. You know, tonight was one of the 
best crowds that I've seen since I've been covering games. Mm -hmm. What would you say about the support that they've given you over mm -hmm. your last four years now that you've just completed your last game here? Yeah, I think I could probably talk about them for a really long time. And I think more than anything is just like, thank you. I'm, re I'm very grateful that I got to play in an environment that supports women's athletics the way that they do, not only women's basketball, but and to be honest, they've been doing this before I ever stepped on campus. Maybe it wasn't quite at the magnitude that it is now, but you know, these people and these fans show up and they have shown up and they will continue to show up. Um, they understand how good our sport is. They understand where the sport's going. Um, but they've, you know, shared in a lot of really special memories for, for myself and a journey that, you know, I've changed a lot as a person and as a basketball player over the course of my last four years. And they've been a big part of that too. So I think the biggest thing is just thank you. I'm forever grateful. And I hope there's a lot of times where I can come back and be in the crowd at sold out Carver Hawkeye Arena cheering for, you know, young girls that you know, want to be like us. Thanks, Caitlin. And thanks, Hannah. Okay, we'll go to questions for Coach Bluter. We'll start here in the front. Dennis? Dennis Dodd, CBS Sports. Lisa, you knew West Virginia was physical. You knew they were very good defensively. If someone had told you before the game you'd be held 30 under your average, Caitlin would have one field goal in the last 16 minutes, and you guys would have one field goal in the fourth quarter, how would you have liked your chances? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably not very good. I mean, you know, that's... Um, typically not our style, but we found a way. And that's, I'm so proud of this team for being able to divert from what, you know, usually works for us and, and find a different way to win. Um, again, I thought against that pressure defense that we only turned the ball over 15 times, that is the lowest of any West Virginia opponent all year. And, and so I am extremely proud of our women for keeping their composure in that situation. And it certainly helped playing with a, with a terrific home crowd. We're in the front. Uh, Luke Blaine, Daily Athenaeum. So staying on the note of defense, uh, you all were held to your lowest uh, first half total of the season at 26. So what was going on in the first half and what uh, went right in the second? The second half, we got to the free throw line early, you know, in both quarters. And that was our best offense, was drawing fouls and getting to the free throw line. We're a good free throw shooting team. And by far, you know, getting to the free throw line was the easiest way for us to score. And, you know, with that kind of pressure defense, you're going to foul a lot. And I'm glad we had a crew that called it tonight. I mean, there was 57 free throw shot in the Princeton game. So this is not unusual for that to happen. Uh, Tanner Mounts, U92 Radio. Um, you, you kind of go back to last year, and you had a very similar game against Georgia here in the round of 32. You, you, you heard Caitlin talk about how this one wasn't as close, but they used that. Did you see that in your team's huddle this year where they were a little more composed than they might have been last year, and did they use last year's experience to kind of help them in a close game this year? You know, we didn't talk about it specifically, but I think it was in everybody's mind that we were able to pull that out last year. And I think that gave us confidence. When you're in situations and you can use that experience to fall back on, um, you know, we're going to use that whenever we can. I, th I think that helped us tonight. Uh, Chantel, or go ahead. Yeah. Jen Hatfield with the next. Um, Coach, you know, you, you talked about West Virginia's defense, and, but also your lack of turnover. So I'm curious, you know, when you, when you got in that half court when you were trying to run your offense, what was most challenging against that West Virginia defense once you kind of got through the initial traps? Yeah, um, I don't want to give anybody a scouting report, so I'm just going to keep that to myself right now. I mean, you can watch the film and know what bothered us there, but I mean, obviously, right? You saw the good good defense that they performed, so I'm going to leave it at that. Shanto. Lisa Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. Not many coaches coach generational players, and fewer still sort of do it in a time of like right now when the sport is growing as it is and more eyes are on it. I'm just curious what this last year coaching Caitlin, like how has it changed you as a person and a coach? Wow. Um, I mean, I, I just think I appreciate her so much, her skills. Um, I'm, I'm very appreciative. I appreciate how she has handled this. I, I think her crown is heavy. And I mean, she has been the face of women's basketball and you can even say men's basketball all year long. And for you to, for her to do that every single night and really never have a bad night, um, to, 
to do that with the, seeing the best defense that she can get every single night, everybody doing different things to her, um, pulling off being a great teammate, not having people be jealous of her on this team, um, filming a commercial one day, being in practice fully ready to go the next day, um, that has impressed me. And uh, I, I guess I'm just more appreciative of um, what these what these young ladies are going through today as far as social media and the haters out there. And I am, I think I just appreciate them and, and really feel like, God, they, they, got, they have a really, it's a great time to be a female athlete and it's also a really hard time. It's both, it really is. Kyle. Kyle Huseman, Hawkeye Report. We've talked a lot about West Virginia's defense tonight, but you, you mentioned your guys' defense holding them to 54. Um, what did you feel like you guys did well tonight, and what adjustments did you make throughout the game to, to kind of counter against them? We were trying to mix up our defenses a little bit, um, but I thought our players were pretty locked in um, and knew the scouting report really well, knew their personnel very well. You know, Gabby Marshall doesn't have a point tonight. She worked her tail off on defense. And that's worth a lot. And then she has another block tonight. I mean, you know, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, no, I think our, our defense was very good, and I think it's because they, they were so focused on it, and they knew against a really good defensive team like that they were going to have to play defense. They were going to have to match the defensive intensity. Steve, over on the left there. Steve Silverman, Ivy Hoops Online. Coach, just to follow up on that last question for a minute, you limited Quinterly to only 15 points tonight, and I think Harrison only maybe six. Um, can you talk a little bit about what you were doing to limit those two very dynamic guards? Yeah, that was our focus coming into there. You know, We held Jordan to three points, and that's really hard to do. Um, she's so fast going downhill, and uh, you know, JJ was, She's an incredible player, but again, our defensive focus was on those two players, and we knew we were going to give up some open shots to other people, but we really felt other people are going to have to beat us. We're not going to let those two beat us. Other people are going to have to do that, and, and I think our, you know, I mean, there were some people that stepped up and made some shots. Kaya Watson, she played a really good game tonight, one of her best, I think. Um, you know, Jayla Hemingway came in and played a really nice game, too, but Again, when you take the ball out of the hands of those two players, it's different. Zachary Draves, SB Nation Swish Appeal. Uh, Coach, I'm curious to know about your thoughts on Sid's performance tonight. <laughs> 13 points, yeah. seven rebounds, goes five for five from the, from the line, not to mention that she started. What does that say about her in terms of where she was, where she is, and where she's going? I'm so glad that you asked about Sid because Honestly, we were tied up with two minutes, right? Her drive, left hand layup, fouled, three-point play, that was a huge momentum for us. Um, so I, I'm really proud of Sid. Um, and, and her ball handling has improved so much. Her confidence has improved so much. But I mean, rebounding-wise, she ends up with seven. We had a lot of good rebounding performances, though. Kate has 10, Hannah has 11. Um, but Sid having to step into a starting position at this time of the year, is a really difficult thing to do. I mean, that could upset the tempo of a lot of teams. But I think our team has always respected Sid so much and what she brought, brought to the table. Um, I'm proud of the rest of the group for not hanging our heads that we don't have Molly, but instead is, OK, now we get Sid in the starting lineup. And it's just a mentally you know, positive way to think about it. OK, we'll go to the middle for our last question for Coach. Uh, Jason Drew, KCHA. Uh, along the same vein, Hannah Stulke, uh, 11 total rebounds, you know, five on one end, six on the other end. Just curious your thoughts on her play tonight in the paint, and then also uh, had, uh, what, uh, 12 points as well. Yeah, I, she rebounded the ball really well for us tonight, um, and that we needed that. Um, we needed her speed on the defensive end, I think. Um, I think she could have been a little more um, on attack mode on offense tonight. Um, I, I think she passed the ball out too easily. I think she could have went to work a little bit more in there on the offensive end. And I want her to do that because she's really explosive and she's really good and she didn't show that part of her game tonight. But she helped us so much on the defensive end, the rebounding end. 
Um, and, and just, you know, being able to transition like she does. I mean, we didn't get that many transition offensive points, but her being able to transition back on defense is, was also really important for us. And I see Christy there. I just want to shout out to my Christy there. Love your, our kid captain from the very first game. Christy's been with us on this journey, and I'm so proud of her. Thank you for being with us, Christy, this whole time. All right. Thank you, Coach. Congratulations. Okay, we'll follow the same format for our final press conference of the evening. We'll start off with two minutes opening statement from Coach Kellogg, and then we'll go to questions for the players. Please silence all cell phones. Please make sure there's no cell phone video, flash photography, or video cameras in this press conference, and media may access the press conference video at the NCAA Digital Workroom. When you have a question, please raise your hand and identify yourself by both name and affiliation. And first, we'll go to Coach Kellogg for opening statement. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Um, I guess first, congratulations to Iowa um, on a great season, on advancing, um, great atmosphere. Um, they've done something really, really special here. Um, fun to play in, fun to be a part of. Um, great talent, very well coached. So con congrats um, to Iowa on advancing in the tournament. Um, but with that said, I'm so proud of our team. Um, the resiliency, that's kind of been our word all year. Um, for them to you know, be able to showcase what we've known, um, but I think a lot of people maybe didn't know about West Virginia women's basketball, so hopefully there were some eyes um, on this game tonight that uh, people across the country got to see how special this group is. Um, I've said all year this is the most fun or uh, one of the, you know, the best seasons that I've enjoyed in my coaching career in year 19 or 20 as a head coach, and I credit that to the players. Um, they have just been phenomenal. Um, you know, we've talked about buy-in and allowing these kids to be themselves, and that was our goal, and I think we've been able to do that. Um, but that defensive effort tonight was, uh, I thought, just tremendous and special, and to do some of the things we did statistically to that team um, for as good as they are offensively, it was a credit to our players. Um, of course, wish we could have made a few more shots and done a, you know, made a few more plays. Um, but when we were tied with, I think, five minutes to go, um, you know, that was what we wanted to be. Um, the game went about to script for us um, as far as holding them down and trying to give ourselves a chance late. So just so proud of our group. I mean, I am just tremendously proud to be the head coach at, at West Virginia to coach this group of girls. And uh, I look forward to the future and, and certainly thank um, the senior group um, that got us to this point because we're in, we're in a pretty good shape right now with our program. All right, we'll go to questions for the student athletes. We'll start off here in the front row. Aaron Parker, U92 Radio for Jayla. During one of the home Big 12 games, I believe it was either Texas Tech or Houston, we kind of asked you about your, your kind of your whole five-year career, and you said, my knees hurt. How, how are your feelings after this game going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Iowa for nearly 28 minutes? Um, this probably won't be a shocker, but my knees definitely still hurt. Um, <laughs> but, 
you know, I'm just grateful to be able to even have this whole extra year to be able to play here at West Virginia. I'm just grateful to even be able to, you know, have this team and this coaching staff that came and embraced all of us. So, yeah, I would just say I'm blessed to be here. Uh, Turning around to you, 92 Radio. This is a question for JJ. Uh, I know Jordan's not up here, but a lot of people are going to look and say that she only scored three points, but she also had nine assists. If you could just speak to, you know, her play and how important she was on the offensive end with those nine assists on feeding uh, the entire team. Um, Jordan, even though yeah, she may not have had a lot of points, but she do other things like defense. Her defense is amazing. Her passing skills are amazing. So even when she's not scoring, she'll still make something happen on that court, and we need her out there. Go ahead, Jen. Jen Hatfield with the next. Um, JJ, I'll address this to you, but Jayla, feel free to jump in as well. I'm just curious, you know, particularly the second quarter and the fourth quarter, you guys held them to 27% shooting and then 10% shooting. What was working so well to really lock I Iowa down? Our defense. Our defense has been our, our identity all year. So that just speaks to how tough and resilient we are. Go ahead, Jayla. No, I second that. I think that our ball pressure and, you know, our full court press dictates a lot of the things that happen on offense because when we get going in transition and get people turning the ball over, that's really what gets a lot of our points in transition. Uh, Luke Blaine with the Daily Athenaeum. JJ, I was just curious, as such a defensive-minded player as you are, I mean, what was it like tonight going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Caitlin Clark on her home court in her last home game? I mean, it was amazing. I think a lot of people would take that opportunity as like a golden opportunity, opportunity to either beat the best player in the world or go toe to toe with her and compete all 40 minutes. And that's what we did. That whole game competed the whole time. And nobody can take this away from us. Back here in the front. Aaron Parker, U92 Radio for JJ. Um, I kind of caught Towards the end, uh, at the end of the game, when you're heading back towards the locker room, it looked like you gave a little bit of a um, of a signal towards the Iowa faithful, a, a great crowd, and just kind of thanking them is what it looked like to me. Is that what that was? And, and can you speak on how great this crowd was and how great of an opportunity it was to get West Virginia in this spot in the second round? Um, yeah, I think I waved to our fans, and then I also waved to the Iowa fans because they're a great supporting cat fans. Like. I've never seen anything like it, so got to give credit to that all the time. So, yeah, of course. Go towards the back. Joe Bricotto, West Virginia Metro News. JJ, with as many games as you guys have won, obviously you believe you can win every game. But when you erased that 10-point deficit in the fourth quarter, was that when belief really started to kick in that you guys could get the result? I think we knew that we believed in ourselves since – the bracket came out, as y'all seen. And I think Coach believed in us that we had the ability to beat this team, and we just came up short, so. Jayla, do you want to take that one as well? Um, yeah, I don't think that confidence was ever lacking. I think that we always felt like we compete with if we can compete with any team in this country, especially with our defense, and I think it showed tonight. Back here up front. Uh, Tanner Rounds, U92 Radio. I'll address this one to JJ, but Jayla, if you have something. Um, if there was a message that you guys would send to the national media now that you were in the spotlight, you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Iowa, were tied with a couple minutes to go in the game, really locked them up defensively, is there anything that you'd want everyone to know about West Virginia basketball going forward? Y'all keep watching us. We got more coming next season. Yeah. Don't, don't underestimate any of us. I think that West Virginia definitely is going to be on the map going forward, period. <laughs> any other questions for our players? Okay, thank you both. Thank you. All right, we'll go straight to questions for Coach Kellogg. Please raise your hand. Go on the far side there, Brent. Steve Silverman, Ivy Hoops Online. Coach, seems like you're close to really breaking through 
uh, and becoming a power program. I mean, not that you aren't already, but maybe to get you know to a Sweet 16 and Elite Eight, maybe even a Final Four. Can you talk about what it would take for your team to take that next step and 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 become the kind of elite team I just described? Um, time, experience, um, probably more than anything else. Um, you know, maybe some depth. Um, you know, so we're three coaches in three years, remember. So these kids were recruited by several different coaches that we had to blend together in one year. Um, you know, I, I think we're close. I think we've been close all year, but no one wants to give us, doesn't feel like a whole lot of credit. Um, I thought our seed was not what we were, you know, was not the representation. I don't think we were an eight seed. I didn't think that. I don't think we got all the credit we probably deserved through the regular season. Um, our kids have battled. We've been one of the best defensive teams in the country. Um, I'm glad tonight we got to showcase that. So now maybe people will start to understand, you know, what we are and what we're about. Um, you know, and so, yeah, I do think we're close. Um, I, I think we need more depth. We need experience. We hadn't played in one of these games, right? Like this is, we didn't have anybody on our roster other than Kyle Watson who had played and been to a Sweet 16. So this was new for us. It was new for me. Um, you know, phenomenal environment. Uh, I've said now that I've been here that I want to get that thing in Morgantown if we're going to continue to do this in women's basketball and give the top four seeds um, that kind of environment, then I want to create that in Morgantown. I thought we we certainly were on our, we trended the right direction this year and I think had the second highest attendance that we've had in our school's history. So people are starting to fall in love with it. Um, and we represent an entire state and that's what a lot of people don't know about West Virginia. There's no pro sports. We're the only power five in the entire state. So the Mountaineer fans are, and they're rabid. They are, they just love their Mountaineers. And I want to play off of that and we are hardworking and, you know, blue collar and those things. And, and I want a team that represents um, the state and certainly proud of them tonight because I think we did that. Um, but yeah, I don't want to, I don't want this to be the, the finality. I don't want this to be when we talk about advancing. I don't want it to always be one round. I'm not complaining about that in year one, but certainly would like to advance a little bit further. Go ahead in front. Luke Blaine, Daily Athenaeum. So you mentioned in your opening statement that you hope you showed uh, basketball fans something they hadn't seen before with uh, the West Virginia Mountaineers or something they didn't know about. What, what do you hope that uh, just general fans of basketball and women's basketball can take away from this Mountaineer team? Well, I hope you can appreciate the grit and the toughness and the resiliency and those types of things that our team showed in a crazy environment when the whistle didn't go our way. Um, you know, and in that fourth quarter when they go one for 10 and score only from the free throw line and our kids could have gone the other way and we didn't and we battled in a tough environment. Man, that place was loud a couple times. We had worked on all of our nonverbal cues and our kids just bought into it and I was just really, really proud of them. So I think a lot of people, or at least I hope, I don't know, I hadn't seen anything yet, but I assume people are probably pretty proud of that performance, especially in our state, but um, even outside of our state, I think people can be proud of, of what we did. Aaron Parker, U92 Radio. Coach, you go from the gauntlet of the Big 12 to the Big 12 tourney to you get a week off, but then you're in March Madness playing Princeton and Iowa. Such a great run, but how long does it, do you take to kind of decompress before trying to address the transfer portal and trying to address maybe replacing Lauren and, and Jayla? Yeah, not long um, with the portal the way it is, and somehow that's ridiculous, and that's probably another story for another time or conversation, but that thing does not need to be opening a week ago. Um, you know, and so you're already doing some of it. So, you know, you're trying to prepare for an NCAA tournament, and the portal opens on the same day. Um, you know, so, no, we don't – you don't rest. There is no rest yet. So once you get your roster complete, you rest. So, no, we'll get back at it tomorrow and probably be back on the phone. Um, hey, but maybe some recruits watch this one tonight and are like, hey, I would love to play in that system. So that's what you hope. Jen. Jen Hatfield with the next. Coach, I, I know you guys average forcing a bunch of turnovers. You had 15 tonight, not as many as you normally do, yet you held Iowa to 64 points. And what did you like best about your half-court defense? Yeah, um, no, we were still plus, what, I think eight on the turnovers and – you know, even on the second chance points, I think we had more offensive rebounds, right, than they did. So we won the possession battle. Um, so a lot of that, too, in the press was going to be to slow them down. We needed possessions to be a little bit lower, did not want possessions to be too high tonight. So I thought we controlled that 
piece of it. Um, we ran different kids at, at Clark as much as we possibly could to give her as many looks to hopefully frustrate her, give her the little guys, go guard her, JJ and Jordan, put our bigger players on her. Um, but they just bought into the game plan and, and to the scout, and I thought we were disruptive. Um, that's kind of been our, our MO all year on the defensive end. And, you know, I think people think we press, so sometimes they think that means we play really fast, but we don't have to do that. Um, I've always wanted to win multiple ways. So if we need to play fast, we can. If we need to grind out a half quarter like tonight, then we need to be able to do that. Um, so yeah, it was just a full team, full team effort on a, on the best offensive team in the country. Uh, Ten rants, U ninety two radio. Uh, I know you. This is your first year here. Jayla has been here for four years, and just the one year that you've gotten to coach her, or even all the seniors. What would you say about? The role that they've played on, uh, you know, this basketball team—not just this year, but moving forward as well. Yeah, well, hopefully that you know every senior wants to leave a legacy, and we all want to make it better than what it was when we got it. And you know, I, I think we're we're moving in the right direction for sure. Jayla's been here the longest. Um, she's our toughness. A lot of our toughness was wrapped up into Jayla. I told her that from the jump. Um, really proud of her. She came off the bench for us all year after starting the vast majority of her career um, and was and took it with flying colors and has been really good. And, and I loved her tonight. I know she didn't shoot it great, but still loved her out there. Lauren, you know, struggled here a little bit offensively late in the year, but she's one of the premier defenders um, in the country. And then Tavi Diggs is our other senior who didn't get to play tonight, um, you know, or here, but had some really good moments for us. And she was a transfer that's been here a couple years. So really, really good senior class that left left a really nice legacy for us as we move forward. Any further questions? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, Luke Blaine, Daily Athenaeum. I've asked you about uh, Tirza before and the impact that she plays. And, you know, she led the forwards in minutes tonight. What can you speak on her contributions tonight? And maybe not uh, apart from uh, the scoring section of the stat sheet. Yeah, no, Tirza was really good. Um, she's battled injuries multiple times this year that just really affected her flow and rhythm for the most part. And, you know, we thought it was probably going to have to be her and Kylie be just because of how fast their post players are, especially Stolke in the, in the open floor. So we needed some speed to, to hang with them because they're so good when they get out in transition. So Tirza needed to play big minutes. I was proud of her. I thought she battled her butt off um, and gave us some, yeah, gave us some great minutes and, and a few big buckets for us. And Probably I thought she got a whistle on a couple more, too, that we didn't get. Um, you know, so really disappointed in that, um, but not from Tears' standpoint, just that we didn't get the opportunity to, uh, to, to kind of play through some of the whistles. All right. Thank you, Coach.